What I, what I wanted to, to just quickly go over were, were some of the things that a number of you are thinking about, even as we're thinking about international trade optimization. And it's, and it's the context of r right now there are things that are happening in other parts of the world. As, as those are taking place, how, how are we really responding to them? And many of those responses are, are things that uh, probably nearly all of you have Twitter accounts. Um, I, you probably also noticed if you just signed up for one that when you sign up for one, you have to choose somebody that you are going to, who are you going to follow? Um, and and there's, a, there's a person that, that pays to get her name put on number one to that in order for you to sign up for Twitter, she's the first one that you're given the choice. Um, and she just went over 26 million last week. Um, so you're sort of going, so you figure out how that one person is making more money at all this in the sense of money. But if you actually look at how would you actually impact the world? I, they're just put together a, a couple of slides in a, in a way of you're all sitting here so you don't need to know what that is. You all sat here as well for a number of things with the fires of 2007. In 2007, um, in, in looking at this, those flames that San Diego looked at from our perspective, but from the perspective of Tijuana, it was actually much greater, much more um, and that was one of the things that, some of the things that George accomplished of being able to evacuate people into Mexico and then back out of the, there's some, there's some very powerful things that CBP unquestionably led what was taking place in the understanding because they had a perspective that was much larger than just San Diego County or the, so if you now looked at what could we do today that, does anybody know what July 15th represents six years ago? That's the anniversary of, that's the sixth birthday of Twitter. So we're coming up um, two and a half weeks, and you know, I know that's not a big deal. Um, Sunday is a much bigger deal with the Mexican presidential election. But more people will pay attention to the birthday of Twitter. Um, more people in Colorado are looking at fires like this, although these fires are in New Mexico. These was, this was last week. These are all pictures from, from Twitter. Um, the Mount Baldy fire that's there is over 300,000 acres. So huge fires, and people are saying probably not put out until the fall. But when you actually look at it, a picture that somebody taking, go, going up, and this woman um, was concerned that people did not understand the ferocity of what the fire was about. So she, as a forest fire employee at the PIO, going up and taking a picture and going, look at the fire. This is serious. This thing is burning in ways that we have not thought about. And so here's a Twitter picture. That Twitter picture had more of an impact on people looking at what the fire was doing and saying, we've got to do something. Now as you actually look at those kinds of things going out, we had a small one up here um, on Campo Reservation um, where there's the casino, there's the fire. One of the things that took place is Cal Fire and others jumped on it because the fear, what if that fire crosses into Mexico? If that goes into Mexico, what are the resources that Mexico has to actually do something? What if that fire then goes to Tijuana? And to send you, and you sort of look at that and go, so people jumped on it and the, and the winds were very favorable um, from, from actually looking at, um, uh, at, at what happened in a couple of days later. Here is, here is what the uh, uh, fire uh, by Fort Collins started out as, as people looking at it, the, the character of um, on, on radar over here, th that's actually the smoke. This is one picture. The smoke, that's in near real time. Here's what the smoke, here's where the fire is. San Diego, interestingly, our, um, our radar covers all, most of northern Baja California. So that as an example, how much does it cost Mexico to know in near real time where the smoke is burning? Zero. But they have to know which web page. How much does it cost anybody in the US to do that? Zero, because it's already been paid for. But how often do we actually do that? We don't. So next red radar is a tool that's there that wasn't made for smoke, but it works for smoke. And if you actually look at something and it's blowing in a straight line, you know it's blowing really fast. If it's going and it's swirling or it's making a circle, you actually know a huge amount about what's going on. So the, 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 the smoke equals very much the severity. Where is it going? And when you actually looked at that yesterday with what happened at the fire near Colorado Springs, all of a sudden you go, whoa, in near real time, here's what's really going on. As how would you get that information out? So when you look at this and you go, so here's the High Park fire near Fort Collins. Who took that picture? Right, somebody else in another helicopter. 
it wasn't, anyway, so another helicopter's looking over there, taking the picture, going, whoa, dude, he's from San Diego, yeah, dude, <laughs> pushing the button, and it gets tweeted out to now thousands of people are looking at that picture, that they can see things, and they can be motivated to go, look at how big those things are, we have to do something. That's the kind of thing that we could do, not just for a fire, but think of the same thing with Secretary Bursons. How could we do that where we're looking at the border and we're doing the border so we're making the flow work because this flow is working because the infrastructure, the cloud is there um, that makes this possible. Um, those flames two to 400 feet high, that was High Park, now the same thing. And at the same time, that same day, here's another picture from Southern Mexico. So this uh, tropical storm Carlotta. So there's huge rain there. And, and you look at how do these pieces fit together? Where is the, not just disaster everywhere. So Kevin is having an impact in Hobart. So the disaster everywhere. How do you link the two pieces together? One of the ways that that's linked together in a very powerful way is the Red Cross has built a command center here. They're using Google as um, the software. And how much would it cost to give them or to give you that Google? Right, zero. So in a sense, what the U.S. has done to build an enormous way of sharing, very much the opposite of what Secretary Burson is pointing out of stovepipes, this has now connected L.A., San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange County, San Diego, Imperial, are all now connecting using the same database. They're going into Google. They're going into it anywhere. And uh, Steve Price, one of the things that he's doing, that the servers, the little lights that are in there, all of that data is coming out of that room there. As in, a, in a very simple way, we're using the cloud in a powerful way, and you can say, so the stuff exists, the machines are there, the connections are there, the thing that we're trying to make is the, are the relationship. So with what they did, they put together a physical space. That physical space we're trying to now duplicate for law enforcement and other things in the, like in the Attorney General's um, office and other places where there's a monitor functionally, but the most powerful thing are the hundreds of millions to billions of dollars of infrastructure in the back end that we could use as ways that we're showing off. It's a, a, a simple way of, as an example. In the US, we use a thing called the Incident Command System. Um, and there's software to actually do that. A person here in San Diego that was very much involved in the Chelsea King built his own software. He now gives this away. And you can see that he has 4,320 members. Um, and you can see that as, as that's being done, that actually now has all of the forms, all the different kinds of pieces. And guess which language it's in? Only English. And it's because no one ever thought about, what if we put it in Spanish? Might this be another thing? That it's all there. And Mexico doesn't use the same forms. But here's an entire way of collaborating. And then the real power, if you had the same way the secretary was saying, if you had one form and another form and it asked you, what's your date, you know, your thing, and you make the two forms talk to each other, you functionally use for disasters, you use the cloud to fill in all the forms. You use it as a way that functionally accomplishes what you're trying to do. And, and that's actually something that we could do as a group because some of you actually speak Spanish. I speak Russian, but that doesn't help. So in thinking about what we could do then together, the fires that are in the US, and you can, so you can look at the fires that are here and the ones in Colorado. Look at the fires in Brazil, but look at the fires in Africa. And you go, so we think we have it bad. We do, in, in parts. But look at other parts of the world. Look at Madagascar. And you go, the character of what other people are experiencing is extraordinary. And how might we collectively go help a whole bunch of other places in the world? So um, when we had Exercise 24, and you recognize um, Alan Burson, uh, the Attorney General, um, uh, was actually um, Admiral Gomez. And, and in sitting back there, that sense of the seed from which many of these things came is to how do we actually do this? So the seed that has grown out of this lines and flows idea of how do we actually accomplish things, um, a way that we could actually do it is, since most of us, almost everybody's using Twitter, saying, how might we go get Twitter tools? There's more than 300,000 Twitter tools. What would be, say, the, the top 25 that we as a group would use to make things actually work really, really much better? Um, and um, Mike, I'm, maybe I didn't ask you to do this, but there's a, there's a feed on the, the one that's in the middle. Could you move it over to, the, to that one? It uh, says Geophedia up on the top left. It's the one that, if the screen between me and you, it's on that screen. I think it's still there. It has a circle in the middle of it. Anyway, oh well. Um, the, the one that's on the bottom, 
um, uh, it's called Geophedia, um, as a way of putting dots on maps. Um, it would be a, um, you know, I, I should have taught, yeah. It was, um, I'll, I'll just go on. Um, in, in looking at it, there are, there are ways of using the cloud where in a very powerful way, the, all of the tweets, uh, how many of you use Instagram? Okay, and Pinterest, and Flickr, and Picasa. And you can, some of you are going, so the same hands are going up over and over again. Okay, so there's a whole group of people that are using these whole group of things, and how much do you pay for all of them? And, and yet the power of all that information, how would it go out, how would we use it for the border, not just for disasters? And so of, of doing that as an example, here's a picture of Geophedia. Um, so uh, what Geophedia is doing, as, as I, it, I picked a particular area, and in that particular area, here's all the tweets, um, the Instagram, the Flickr, uh, Picasa, of a particular place for a few hours. And, and what that was, and no one probably recognizes this, unless you can read down here, this was on June 9th. This is the Auburn shooting where somebody went in and shot or killed three people, shot three others. Okay, so when that happened, they took the place that it took place. They just shot up. Who's Twittering? Who's doing that? All these people down here, totally clueless. They have no idea what's going on. And you go, so the, they have nothing to do with it. But the people in other places are going, oh, these are the, all the people that were doing it. So functionally, it's dots on maps from this whole thing of using the cloud to make sense out of something that just happened. And so almost exactly the same thing if we put it over the top of San Ysidro or, or other places because all it's doing is just a visualization display of data that's actually already there. So another one um, uh, that, I, that I looked at this, this weekend looking at the same thing. So here is San Diego State um, in one day. Okay, and so, you go, so this is one day, San Diego State, all this stuff that's going on, and a very surprising thing for somebody that's been here for a really long time, I can go and I can see where, the, so what I was trying to do, I went and looked at nearly all of these, are these pictures or tweets or things, are they of the right place? Is the right building in the background? Are the right things? And I look at it and go, my God, this thing actually works. And so when I go through and actually look at this, one of the things that I did is I actually wished I didn't learn, know a lot of stuff that I know now about San Diego State. <laughs> There's a lot of students that do stuff that I didn't even think that they did. And then they put it on the web of look at this. Um, so I declined to show you some of that. But as I, that was the circle in a very interesting way. If you search by circle, you get a lot. If you search by a square, so it's a different algorithm. This is of exactly the same place, the same time, just done in a different way. So it's how the data are displayed. And you can actually display the data in a whole bunch of ways. There's a whole number of these tools. And if you actually looked at them, not just as a display way like this. So here now is, here is Colorado Springs yesterday. So, so this is putting a circle around a place that I was interested in because of the Waldo Canyon fire and saying, who is there? What's going on? So here is an incident. This is just putting a circle around any place. I put one over my own house, like you would do for Google Earth. Who's tweeting around my neighborhood? I am not ever going to do that again. Because I actually now know a lot about my neighbors that I really wish I did not know. And I cannot get it out of my mind. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not doing that again. So, so when you actually look at the Colorado, the Waldo Canyon fire that's there. So this is yesterday. So looking yesterday, and, and a very simple thing, you, you put it in there. And depending on the size that you're doing, I just, the, because this just started as they're now doing, they had never thought about using this for emergency management. So when we contacted them and said, you know, this could actually work really well about a month ago, they went, we never thought about that. And so now when you actually look at that this is actually doing things, it can feed things into a whole bunch of other ways, but here is another display. So that up here on the top, you can see it's by map or collage, and I've been showing the map, but then you can do the collage. The collage can have all sorts of things that aren't located because it's the, the hashtag as well. And you can go down and you can actually look at the, so here's the fire, but you can see here's somebody talking about the wrestling championships, the other kinds of things that are going on there. And, and as, as what's there, this represents what, what is way, way over a thousand pictures of things that are there. And so you can see, especially if you have a big screen, you can go, wham, you can look at a staggering amount of information very quickly. We could do the same thing with the border. And you could do the same thing by putting multiple languages in, different kinds of ways that you're, and you go, so this exists. It's in the cloud. It could actually be accomplished. So now looking at another one that uh, Kate Starbird, 
who's at the University of Colorado uh, in Boulder, but is going to the University of Washington. She has a thing called Tweak the, t t tweak the Tweet. And so as she stood that up of looking at, and, and you can see now where the fire raced uh, yesterday, uh, but then going all of these different kinds of things that, that rely on functioning. She's just going and gathering the data and saying it. What if you did exactly the same thing for San Ysidro, for Mexicali, for any other thing that were there? Because is Twitter just in the US? Most of Twitter is not in English. Okay, when you actually look at this, you can go, so here's something that can be done globally with stuff that exists. It's just the thought pattern and for the fact that students can go, oh, I can not only do this, I can invent a company that could do this. And I could do this for now for, I'm going to now do it for every ship that goes around the world, all the tweets, and there are not many tweets around the ships. You can go, well, but we could do that because we could actually do a whole bunch of other things uh, with technology. So all it's really doing, that same visualization, here's exactly the same data, but it's, it's just an Excel spreadsheet. And so all she's done is gone out, taken that data, the feeds that are there, put it into a sheet, and then make, make rules. And you, so this is sort of like exactly what a business major would do in a very powerful way. But you're saying the data matter, we can show it off, and could we not do this, not just for fires, but use the same things that have been built and actually do it for the borders. Um, last couple of slides. And, and if we then look at other things, how many of you use QQ? I, I know I've asked this for a number of you before. Okay, so not too many hands went up. Okay, we are not in the room here. We are not among the 711 million people that use it. Okay, so there, that's the major media thing that's used in China, sort of like a Facebook SMS put together. Okay, and one of the things that John is going to talk about, I think, in a few minutes, maybe, maybe not, is a really simple thing that you could look at. The energy that's up in the top of the mountain, um, Mexico could provide that, or from the, from the valley, could provide the energy to a country like China to bring your machines over here. So bring the computers to the energy. And then if you have the computers at the energy, if your export was then fiber optic, it takes less than half a second to get back to China. So you can say, so serve QQ from here. And then turn around and do it the other way, serve things like QQ into the US to sell things. So now it becomes a join of China, Mexico, and the U.S. thinking of a whole variety of things, including disasters, but how could you actually do things that had not ever been done? And if they've already have 711 million people using it, you can go, they actually, it actually kind of works. Or Pinterest is something that a number of you raised your hand. Okay, Pinterest is, is one that profoundly, is there a Pinterest for San Ysidro border crossing? Okay, Pinterest is a visual way of displaying data dramatically enables you to see things and to say things. And you can say, so that's actually something we could stand up this afternoon, that it could be different every day of what are the things for trade, the different things that would take place um, that we're using, um, um, the infrastructure that's there, and Pinterest, as a, as a simple way of saying it, um, has three times the revenue return than any other social media. People buy stuff with it. Not as much as a new one that came out two weeks ago called Social Shopping. Do any of you shop socially? Do you ask somebody else if you're going to buy something? So, so a couple of women came up with the idea of when I'm going to buy something, I ask somebody else about that. So they made social shopping. So that's now just take, taking off um, as that you connect your social networks with your buying networks. And you can go, so think of what if there was a border shopping or a border crossing.com, where the idea is how are we using those tools that are there, but we're now using them for the kinds of things that we're interested in. So of, of a, a simple way of um, a, a small group that does this, the, the Rotary Club. And there are Rotary Clubs in, in, in all of the cities that we're talking about. They actually have, this is their social networking group of things. All the Rotary Clubs are trying to do this. The hosting city for all of the Rotary, 34,000 Rotary Clubs in the world is San Diego. And so when it comes, one of the things that they are interested in doing is how could the Rotary Club make a, here's what you could do for business, and, and, and community, and one of the things that they were really jazzed about was going, oh, we could actually do something with the border. And so Rotary is now interested in doing this with their tools. So maybe a, a, a point here that um, there's another conference that's coming up next month, the ESRI, the major uh, GIS conference in the world, and, and there's a thing that's called a hybrid cloud. And in a very powerful way, the internet as, a, as an example of what we're doing, um, Secretary Burson's idea of the third country functionally is that hybrid cloud. So the thing that connects private clouds 
to public clouds, sort of like connects different worlds. That idea, which is completely where companies and countries are going to a hybrid, that's functionally what we're trying to do. So another way that we could describe this is we're trying to set up a hybrid cloud for international trade optimization. So lines and flows becomes the hybrid in the middle. And then some of the, the computer people that have been interested in this have gone, oh my god, this is such an exact model of how the internet actually works. We could actually make this work in a very powerful way because the idea of making pieces link absolutely is, is where the world is going. So they're going to show this off um, as this, this massive thing that will take place in July. And that might be a time that we help show off. Here's lines and flows as a hybrid cloud example. Um, uh, last couple of slides. Have, um, you can see the border in there really clearly, can't you? Yeah. Like not. Uh, so here is, here is actually an image of lights at night. So you can see that most of the people live in the eastern part of the US. And then you can kind of figure out where the border would be here. But when you actually look at the connections and the, the fact that the lights are there is because there's communities all along there. So that's, that's the place where people are. But in a very powerful way, that's also the place where fiber optic is because people are connected by roads. Roads actually matter that they go all the way through like railroads. And that's actually where most of the fiber is put, on the roads. So like Interstate 8, that's the major backbone fiber that goes out. And so it goes right near um, where, our, where universities are. So if you actually look at the major pathways coming up through Mexico, but if, you, if you think about another thing that's in, um, in pretty much everywhere, think about sports teams. So here is uh, uh, NHL, NFL, and, and they're all over the country. And, and there's a very interesting thing that they do, um, is they also now are, are linking out globally. And when we think about the global soccer, the, the Olympics, you sort of, how do we do this linkage? This is. Uh, um, I think uh, John is the one that first, or maybe it was Corinne, sent this to me, of, of where the fiber is, where the people are, where the images are. So it's functionally linked on that. And this is one of the things that Rotary is also going, oh, let's put all 34,000 of our, um, um, our clubs in there. And then how are they linked together? How are they interacting? And of doing that functionally, they're trying to do lines and flows. But as they're doing that, here's now a picture of where we live. So here is Los Angeles. And you can see here is the marine outpost protecting San Diego, Tijuana from the lights up here. So Baja California. So that's our lines and flows. And, and when you look at the, the character of another thing, so this has nothing to do with taking a picture. This is just Facebook. So how are the Facebook connections made? So the friendships that are made equal fun function what you look down on it. And, and in doing that, how might we connect what friends are interested in? One major thing, which is sports, so as, as an example of connecting things up. Um, is Mexico interested in they, what the term they use is football? It's actually football two ways now, but say soccer. When Mexico plays Brazil, is anybody interested? Um, you could probably sell more than one stadium. Um, but if they're playing in Brazil, how many stadiums in Mexico have people in them? None. So you can go, so the people can watch it on TV, they can do, but in a, in a very simple way, just like the internet works, you could connect up stadiums so that San Diego, an example, would be when the Chargers play the Oakland Raiders, especially if the Raiders are down here, there are, we, we hate it when they come down here, um, <laughs> but, but they're down here, they bought a ticket, they're there, but you can say you could actually fill the, the Raider Stadium in Oakland with a whole group of people if you could broadcast it up there. And so the very powerful thing of looking at where it's really lines and flows of it's connecting things that have a relationship of doing things. And sports might be an analogy. Uh, Secretary Burson was a football player. Um, our president is uh, this year, the, the, our new president was also a football player. He makes the distinction. He was a cornerback, not a quarterback. And if you're in football, you know there's a difference. So he's, but he actually throws the football really well which when he first came here and they, they kicked off the capital campaign and a football player kicked it over the uh, Hepner Hall, they threw it back through and he was standing there so he just picked up the ball and he went like this and, and a hush fell over the people. They had never, I mean, he looked like a football player throwing a football. <laughs> and you go, because that's what he is. So he picked it up and he was looking at, so who can he throw it to? And everybody's going, oh, don't throw it to me, because I can't catch it like you can throw it. 
Um, but, but as you look at, as things change, a major change that's now taking place is places like uh, San, uh, Los Angeles is probably going to have a new stadium. Um, farmers Insurance will be the naming, it will be, so it will be called Farmers Field. Um, as that's taking place, one of the things that they are considering um, is what if you linked that stadium to the 45 other stadiums around the world that, they, that Anschutz owns? Anschutz from Colorado, uh, Phil Anschutz. So this sense of lines and flows, putting it together, kinds of things, you can say, well, as we are doing this, there may be really major economic interests for, for all of us to say, how would you actually accomplish this? How would you do that? That's some of what uh, David and Christina are doing with the mega region. So, so last slide um, of SETI's IVC campus, UABC, um, looking at how might we do a pilot project to bring things together? How might we then, George is going to say some, some things about uh, what the, the, the mega carriers would do. But if we could play football with fiber, do all of these, could we not do trade that's trillions of dollars, that's really lines and flows around the idea um, that, that Secretary Burson has, has championed? And, and the place to try to do all this, I think, is here in the Baja uh, uh, San Diego Imperial region. And how might we actually do that? So I think as we've gathered together, um, John Williams has, has a number. He actually did his thesis on lines and flows. And, and he, he actually looks the same, but he's now a graduate. So the university looks at him differently now. So now they look at him as a source of donations, not a source of tuition. Uh, but it's that John has thought a lot about some real specific examples of what that would be. And, and maybe, maybe we could turn things around a little bit and have George talk first. Recently, I had the opportunity to speak with the supply chain leaders in action. This is the, they represent the uh, 50 of the top Fortune 1000 companies. Collectively, they're responsible for 1.5 trillion in annual trade. These senior executives from this from these industries, this was like uh, GM, Oshkosh, uh, everything that I, literally there were companies that I didn't realize exactly how big they were as transnational groups, like Ch Chiquita Brands and others. And I sat down with them, I had uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner with these individuals for four days. I asked them what were their issues, their concerns as we go forward into the future. And they said without a doubt, they're looking at near sourcing near sourcing into Mexico. There are issues and concerns as that comes together. It's because that they look at there has been more of a doubling of the living wage in China. There's been increase in the level of corruption to the point that they're looking at a massive shift in their business towards Mexico in the next 36 months. This is not just one company. This is a, the top companies of the world are looking at how they move forward in this area. And I said, please tell me, because I am ignorant to your key issues and concerns, please tell me what those are, and I will do everything I can to bring you into the activities that we're involved in, in the X24. X24 is an environment where we simulate the various issues and concerns, science-based, fact-based issues and concerns. They definitely understand the blend of economic and national security, the flow of goods, people, and ideas. In a just-in-time global society, it's how do we move things from A to B in a way that's safe, secure, and efficient, consistent. These are the things and the ways forward. They want to know how do they establish a recovery plan for the disasters that they know will occur. How do they look at the issues and concerns regarding the various resources that are available around the world? Those issues, those, those resources such as precious metals, what happens with volcanic ash? Like the issues that occurred with the volcano in Europe and what that did for the supply chain. Whether it's what goes on in Japan or what happened in Oaxaca or what happened in Mexicali, the Gulf oil spill, these are issues and concerns. And they know this is not a one country issue. This is a global issue. It's a regional issue. And as, a, as they begin to look more at near sourcing, they want to work with the partners these partners, local, state, federal, tribal, international partners that are all engaged in the region, these regional partnerships to increase that safety and security. As we move forward, it's how do we bring our teams together? 
Where are the opportunities to come together that we can explore the challenges that we know that they are concerned with? Because within that next 36 months, there is going to be a massive push into this region. And with this push, we have to be prepared. We have to understand what the various issues and concerns are for the different players, the partners, the relationships. Whether it's industry, whether it's government, military, others, how do we get together? How do we sit down? How do we talk about these issues and concerns? How do we select what issues are the issues that we can address first? This is where we come together as we prepare. As we look at the next administration, present, future administrations, how do we educate each other? How do we prepare the next generation? For example, I'm not as fast as, as Eric and some of the graduate students here as it comes to the tools and technologies that are available to us, but I do understand what a dot is on a map. And they say, this, has, this road is out, or the power line is down, or this is a safer way to go. These are things that I can understand, even if I don't understand how they got that information all together, but I know over time and through education I can learn more about that. And I want you all to be a part of this collective family of friends, the trusted partners who get together, where what we do is we ask for you to just come and get involved, get engaged with your expertise to make that significant difference so we can make that change for the long term. Okay, that's where when we look at that third country, the relationships of the border, that's what we're about here. That's where we come forward and we make a difference. How do these companies plan to prepare? What do they t teach? What do they need to teach people as they prepare for going into different countries? How do they deal with the fears? Whether it's crime, whether it's kidnapping, whether it's drugs, whatever the issues are, how do we sit down? This is what we need to do, and they're asking for help. They're saying, tell us, and we'll do it. They want to know how to maintain that security, that safety of that flow and to keep it going. So if there's an issue with a container, it can stop. If there's a ship, whatever it is, it can stop. They can handle it while continuing the movement of everything else. Whatever they can do, they want to work together to make this happen, which increases everything from the business, the tax base, the security, the safety of the entire region. I know that as we move forward together, it's something that with the next X24, to give you a little bit, let me switch, give you a little bit of background about X24. Before X-24 Mexico, we were asked to help the Balkans. The Supreme Allied Commander of Europe said, can you help us with the Balkans? Well, we brought together over 49,000 people from 92 nations. And all we did is we asked what their interests and concerns are. And let's get together and explore them together with an open invitation. And this is the way forward. And as we look at the center of this interest, of this way forward, is this region. As we look at the advantages of the Cali Baja relationship. As we look at the advantages of the relationship for this particular group that I was talking about, the supply chain leaders in action, it's something you can Google. Another group that's also interested in joining this extended family is the uh, retail, uh, let's see, what is it? The Retail Industry Leaders Association. So we have the manufacturers and we have the shippers who want to get together, who want to sit down and work out the issues and concerns, figure out how to prepare their people, how to educate the next generation, how to ensure as they begin to near source in Mexico, they can do it safely, securely, efficiently, consistently. These are the issues and concerns. Know that you all are already invited to be a part of the next event, the next X24. You've got an open invitation, Come and be a part of it. Come and explore it. Develop solutions together. Science-based, fact-based. And we know from experience in the different exercises that we've done, within three to six months of, of whatever challenge that we've collectively worked on, the solutions and potential solutions that we've developed, we have actively and directly deployed, whether it's the tsunami in Japan, whether it's an earthquake in Oaxaca, whether it's a Gulf oil spill, the same relationships, the same decision makers that were involved in these exercises are involved and operationalized in actual events. And we need you all to be a part of this. I am not the one who knows the way forward. All I do is ask smart people like you all to get involved and then help us, help us find the way. This is what's important. This is the way forward. And I think scientists like Kevin 
who will reach out to everything from Stratcom to the experts in Indonesia to the experts in, I don't know, where, where all did you reach? It was around the world. Of, uh, there was uh, experts in Turkey and others who said, this is what will happen. This is the science. And I want to let you know something. We weren't even going to explore a tsunami in our first big exercise that ended up involving over 12,500 people from 79 nations. We, didn't, we weren't even planning on that until the three-star admiral over Mexican Navy Region 2 came in and said, you know what? We need to have a tsunami in the exercise. There is a tsunami, right? And what do you say when the admiral asks? You say, well, of course, sir. And then we reach out to the experts. And guess what? That helped save lives. I didn't think of it. It was from Admiral Gomez. But this is the way forward. It's, it's participant driven. You are the leaders. All we do is guide each other forward. Because we will come up with solutions that collectively we didn't even think of originally. That is the way forward. That is the way we're going to protect our countries, our region, the way we can educate and prepare the future. This is what I want you to do. This is my little short spiel for the day. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have either now or on a break. Thank you. John? Uh, for the sake of um, time, as well as being that we're getting close to lunch, I wanted to touch upon some things. I simplified uh, an, a chapter within my thesis. Um, I addressed the on-again, off-again project down in Mexico in building the third largest seaport in the world. Um, as of Friday, I talked with some of the landowners down there, and of course, being that they're in the middle of elections, nothing is being moved until the new president has been decided. Um, but just as an example of what lines of flows, how it can play critical in the, not just the relationships, binational relationships, as well as on a global scale, uh, this actually can be a pivotal opportunity for a lot of benefit to, to, uh, to come out of it. So just a little background about it. Of course, it's 150 miles south of the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, you're looking at uh, roughly around 11 square miles of undeveloped land. So um, what you're looking at here is that this has the greatest potential to put uh, a port there. Now, I know a lot has been said about the Lazaro port in regards to upgrading, as well as the expansion of the Panama Canal. Nonetheless, if you look, it has an ideal location towards the United States being that 90% of cargo coming from Asia, whether it's uh, China, so, uh, South Korea, or Japan, ideally would end up going there and mitigate some of the traffic congestion coming out of the Los Angeles and Long Beach ports, as well as Oakland, too. Now, the proposal, of course, the proposal that everybody is, who is aware of this is focusing on is the multimodal port, of course. Um, so far as I know, as of Friday, there are three people who are heavily aggressive of, over operations or construction and operations of it, of course, Carlson's Consortium, um, as well as Hutchinson Wang Po, and in China, as well as uh, Dubai. Uh, of course, along with that is the railway system that will go into the United States uh, with the cargo containers, as well as the international airport, and uh, the development of a city. Um, so one of the things that is of interest is that while all the focus is on those three for one project, is, is there some things here that can actually benefit, the byproducts of this, of this project. So there are some cargoes, containers that come in full from, from a country of origin, and it goes to the United States. After it's offloaded, some of that cargo comes back empty. Well, being that, for example, China has food security issues, there's a, there's a robust agricultural community in, that area, in, the, in the Baja area. Across the sea, you have mineral, you have a mining industry that's also very robust. This can actually help in regards to increasing revenue as well as increasing the economic aspect of the whole entire region. So, not only do you have the opportunity to uh, provide a need for or provide support for a country like China in regards to food and minerals, um, you, but you also are, are you're also expanding or revitalizing an area within that region. And again, this adds to the, the process of what happens with um, the building of a colonnade. The second thing, and I know that the SETI's University is very is close to this um, company, Silicon Borders Project, 
um, being that they're in partnership. And I guess it, it is my understanding lately, it's on, and on again and off again. But one thing here is you're looking at the, the imp impressive aspect of Silicon Borders. Basically, it's a, sil it's a semiconductor manufacturing park. And their goal is to be the world's largest production um, location for semiconductors. The, thus, the idea of Silicon uh, Valley being, or the title Silicon being a part of their, um, of their uh, name. Now, what's interesting about Silicon uh, Borders is the fact that they've used the natural, the natural habitat as a way of generating inexpensive energy. So, of course, you see here you have 2,800 megawatts of power that can be generated up to that point as we, at the cost of seven cents per, per watt. And then at the same time, you have the idea of generating 500 liters of water per second. That's from different manufacturing parks, you're looking at 10 liters per second. Okay? So just those two things alone can actually help in regards to efficiency and in regards to increasing profit flow. Okay, the third thing, and this was something that I put in at the last minute. Um, I wanted to you know, continue to work on this a little closer, but this is something I couldn't let go. Monday, USC School of Engineering came out and they pretty much introduced a, a concept, or they actually expanded, innovated a concept called Twisted Light System. And basically what that means is that if a fiber optic sensor network system can be established in Punta Colnet with a data center and server farms, then you've developed somewhat, you know, developed cloud environment in that area. Now what's interesting about the twisted light system is that normal broadband is about 30 uh, megabits per second, whereas twisted light has exceeded that to 2.56 terabits per second. So in relation, you're basically pushing seven Blu-ray movies per second. Now, this is really huge for e-commerce because now all of a sudden, talking with what Dr. Frost had mentioned, reiterating what he had said, is that now all of a sudden you have now a system in Colonet that has this capacity, this type of infrastructure built in to where now all of a sudden the free flow of transmission start and the bulk of transmission are easy to move. So when you see that, you start to end up producing results such as reduced transaction cost, you're also looking at a surplus of institutional um, asp aspects of it, which that eventually can be reduced. And then, of course, an increase in revenue and performance in, your co in the companies as well as in the entire economy. With that said, this also works on increasing job creation because of the potentials of what this can be brought forth in that entire region of Baja. So, even though this is simplified and there's a lot more complexities and politics involved in it, these are great opportunities that I see can come to fruition within the years. It's just a matter of just massaging this process forward, knowing the pitfalls as well as the, the political personalities involved in all of this. Uh, with that said, if there's any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for hearing me out. In all seriousness, we are making a, we're making a significant difference. And we've been making a difference because people are coming together because they see the, the added value. I mean, we've had big simulations where we've had admirals and generals and ambassadors come together to make decisions together within the safety of an academic environment. In other words, they don't have the limitations that they normally do if they're coming together in the ivory towers of certain areas of government. And that can be any nation that has those problems. But when we get together, and I definitely would say academia help, 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 help. Because we found that wherever they're coming from, if we get together within that neutral space where in academia we all already agree that we're there to learn. And we're here to learn from each other. And something that I think is absolutely incredible that I've uh, gained so much from the academics, the academic environment, is where Frequently, your job, as you understand it, is to guide me into learning something, not just telling me to go do this, 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 okay? We train for things we know about. We, we train for the problems that we know are going to happen. That's something that our various militaries do incredibly well. But you educate for those things you don't know about because you want to teach people how to think through problems. 
And as we look at various issues and concerns, like from big industry who want to be better prepared for changes in the law, changes in various administrations, in economic forecasting, how do we even think about economic forecasting as different areas of the world are prepared for change? As we look at how we can go forward to near source in Mexico, better prepare ourselves for this, looking at where the maquiladoras can fill the needs and concerns and expand forward, we have the potential to change how this hemisphere and the world is related to safety, security, and stability. And we're going to do this through that academically neutral environment. X24, just so you know, it wasn't even called X24. I called it Exercise 24 just because it was convenient. It was an exercise or a simulation that was going to occur on the 24th. Okay? And that wasn't a cool term. The college student said, it's X24. It took me a while to understand when they said, I'm doing X24. And I'm like, whoa, hey, whatever that is, don't do it around me. You know, I, you know, I got a job. You know? And they're like, no, 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 no. They exercise X24. And I originally said it's only going to be, we're only going to explore the first 24 hours of a crisis. But then the participant said, no, we're not. And I said, well, what do you mean? They said, well, we're going to look at the first uh, 24 hours, but then we also want to look at different segments, like how about the first month, the first six months, the first year of recovering from major crisis. So then I very quickly realized that not only was I not in charge of the exercise, but I would just hopefully be there when it was done and played more social director than director. And it was because of how brilliant the people were that they realized that my vision was not big enough. The vision should have been much bigger. And so I learned very quickly to say yes and how. These are my answers to any of the issues and concerns. Whatever someone wants to deal with, yes, now how do we deal with it? What are your concerns? How do we deal with it? And let's move forward together. This is what I'm inviting you to do. This is where we're going together. When we look at international trade optimization, that safety, security of the flow of people, goods, and ideas, this is the way forward. We know it's happening. It's happening from the presidential level down. This is the way it is. We're going to do it, so why not we let's lead that way. Let's come up with potential solutions that help us all. Because guess what? It'll, that's more jobs. More jobs mean better homes, families, businesses. Let's increase that. We can do that together. Do you agree? Can we do this together? I think we can. Thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it. Have a nice lunch.